One serious complication after sustaining trauma to the eyeball is dislocation of crystalline lens. And today we'll see this case in which a 40-year-old male sustained trauma and had a dislocation of this crystalline lens. In the OPD, it was apparent that probably it is just destabilized capsule, but on OT table you could see that the lens is just not in place and it was not possible to manage it and by retaining the capsule and putting in a PCI oil in the bag. So a lensectomy using vitrectomy cutter was planned, this being a soft cataract. So here we'll see that after the incision at the limbus has been placed, we place the trocar cannula for the infusion and the trocar cannula for the light pipe and the cutter. And we start consuming this lens using the vitrectomy cutter. A vitrectomy cutter is basically a gelatin type cutter which is having aspiration using vacuum generated by the machine and a cutter which cuts like a gelatin knife so that it reciprocates to and forth whatever is aspirated in the port is cut off. So after cutting the capsule and consuming part of the crystalline lens this procedure involves removing the remaining capsular attachments and allowing this crystalline lens to fall into the vitreous cavity. There this lens will be consumed using vitrectomy cutter. A lens which is having some significant nucleus which cannot be molded into the cutter port has to be removed using a phragmatome but here this lens is soft enough to be consumed using a vitrectomy cutter. Now this lens which has been partially consumed will be eaten up using the vitrectomy cutter aspiration and cut and the aspiration and cut can be alternated because the machine which we are using has a dual linear foot switch so that we can turn off the cutting at will. Now as we can see this lens which is partially consumed is resting on the posterior pole over the macular area and although PFCL bubble can be placed here so as to protect the macula but because this lens is not in air and is floating in ringer or BSS so it has less weight and it is easily floats in the cavity. It doesn't fall down or cause trauma to the macular area so it is not of importance to have a PFCL bubble. One has to be very careful when cutting vitreous which is attached to the retina because any amount of traction can cause formation of break which we'll see has been a possibility here and this break was timely recognized and lasered. Consuming this lens is little time taking when compared to phaco emulsification because the cutter port doesn't ha does not have any ultrasound energy and only the portion which is aspirated into the cutting port is consumed. So one has to have a nucleus or cortical matter which is soft enough to be aspirated. And this way this nucleus which has been fragmented in pe to pieces is now being consumed. The light pipe can be used to lacerate this lens so as to have a smaller pieces which are easier to consume. Because I have not eliminated any important part of the video just for the sake said so that every possible detail is retained. So we will have a portion of the video which will not show much progress but then one has to spare more time for the video if one wants to retain every possible element. The light pipe can assist in stuffing the nuclear pieces into the cutting port and that will facilitate the removal of this lens. Once we have removed, we have to make sure that PVD is caused and the remaining vitreous, cortical vitreous attached to the retinal surface is removed. There is some amount of hemorrhage in the inferior vitreous cavity 
which was removed and these are two breaks which have been identified and to be lasered right on the table at this moment so that we don't have any future complications. Once the laser has been done, we remove the rest of the trocar cannula. However, we retain the cannula which has the infusion attached so that we can control the intraocular pressure, enlarging the incision so as to accommodate the intraocular lens. And here the intraocular lens for me and my choice is Kelman anterior chamber design. These lenses are very easy to insert and they remain stable and they don't cause any further trauma to the eye in any sense when compared to any other design. They are less time taking and straightforward. The center, centration is excellent to be maintained. Here we can see this post op picture the next day which shows the air bubble and this is the day second day which shows the air bubble has been absorbed and the pupil is dilated fully the ACI oil is in place and this is the day three three picture where there is some defocusing however the patient was doing well thank you